Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're going to take a look at the problem of finding a power series representation for a function using a technique called term by term differentiation. Now, the previous problems that we encountered, we could find power series representations by making algebraic replacements in this result, basically the geometric series. Now, what we're going to do is differentiate a known function which has a power series representation to basically get our function. So let's go ahead and think for the function that we have here, one divided by one minus x squared, what might that be the derivative of? Now, we don't have a lot of options. At this point in your Calc 2 course, you don't have a ton of functions that you know power series representations for. So let's just go ahead and try differentiating one divided by one minus x. All right, so we're going to go back to Calc 1. Don't use the quotient rule here. You can rewrite that as a negative power. So rewrite that as 1 minus x to the negative 1. And now you can differentiate that much quicker using the chain rule. Bring the power down. Keep the inside the same. Subtract 1 from that exponent. But don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 1 minus x would be negative 1. And if you simplify that, the two negatives cancel out. And you can write this with the negative power as 1 minus x squared in the denominator, which is exactly the function that we're looking for a power series for. So what we're going to think from this calculation is we're going to recognize our function as the derivative of 1 divided by 1 minus x. And we do know a power series representation for that function. That is just your basic result from the geometric series. So we're going to make that replacement. We're not going to take the derivative yet. but I'm just replacing 1 divided by 1 minus x with its power series representation, the sum from 0 to infinity of x to the n. And of course, that's going to be valid here when absolute value of x is less than 1. That's your interval of convergence for the geometric series. Now, where term by term differentiation comes in is this is really an infinite sum of powers of x. Let me go ahead and write out those powers of x. So we start off with n equals 0 to give 1, plus x, plus x squared, plus x cubed, plus x to the fourth, so on and so on. That's your power series, or infinite series there. And now we're going to differentiate that. So let me write the derivatives right below. This is going to help us match some terms and patterns here, especially with the starting index for summation notation. Differentiate 1. That's a constant that differentiates to 0. x differentiates to 1. x squared differentiates to 2x. Keep applying the power rule. And we get that. Now, it's worth pointing out here that your starting term, or first non-zero starting term here, is 1. All right, now let's go to our power series here. The main reason, mathematically, you want to work with power series is differentiating a power of x is really simple. And what we're going to basically do is basically bring the derivative inside and differentiate x to the n. And this is one of the most basic results that you learn in Calc 1. The derivative of x to the n, or x to any power, bring the power down, n, and then subtract 1 from that power to get x to the n minus 1. And we're going to use that right here. Now, you can differentiate term by term, like we have here, and then fit a pattern or a general term to that, 
but let's go through this here. Let's go ahead and bring the derivative inside. We have the summation from n equals something. Hold off on writing down the starting index. And that's going to go from some starting index to infinity. We're going to differentiate x to the n, bring the power down, n, times x to the n minus 1. And let's try to determine what value of n we should start with. Now, if you take a look at the non-zero terms here, your first term is 1. What value of n would make this give 1? Well, it looks like we'd have to start with n equals 1. You would get x to the 1 minus 1, x to the 0, which is 1. When you differentiate term by term, typically your starting index changes. That's just to account for your terms left after you've differentiated. And that's basically our power series for that function. Now, you might not want to write it like this. You might be forced by your professor or just asked in certain questions to write it where your power series contains x to a power, like x to the n power, not x to the n minus 1. Now, this is somewhat acceptable, depending on whose course you're taking, to cover all of your courses, especially if you get a really not nice professor. Let's go ahead and rewrite this so that way it contains x to the nth power. And what we're going to do is make a replacement. I'm going to replace all n's with something that would get that to cancel after replacement to just give me x to the n. And it looks like if I replace that n there with n plus 1, then that would do it. Just be careful here. If you're going to change your indices or shift your power of x, you have to do that everywhere. Your power of x, the factor out front, and the n in the summation sign. Now, let's go ahead and do that. Make that replacement right here. You're going to get n plus 1 on the left equals 1. And if you solve that for n, that's going to be equivalent to your summation here, starting with n equals 0, once you make that shift. That's usually the tricky part for students, changing the starting index when you make this shift. The rest of it is pretty simple. So when you shift, your summation now starts at n equals 0, still goes to infinity. n is being replaced with n plus 1. And your power of x, that becomes x to the n plus 1 minus 1, which cancels to x to the n. And that is an equivalent power series representation to this. I can't say either of these is any more right than the others, but it's mainly just aesthetics for how you want to write it here, x to the n minus 1 or x to the n. Notice here your starting indices are different, but both these versions give the same terms. And definitely check that by writing out terms to confirm they give the same terms. That's it for this problem. Most of the work here was just differentiating term by term, which was very easy using this general term, x to the n, and then just adjusting your starting index. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like and subscribe.